Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first quarter of fiscal year 2020 Army Top Recruiting Recognition Ceremony. Our host for today's ceremony is the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, the Honorable E. Casey Wardinsky, accompanied by the Commanding General, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, General Paul E. Funk II, and the Commanding General, United States Army Recruiting Command, Major General Frank M. Muth. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Staff Sergeant Keenan McCarter. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Muth. Clearly after a guy like that speaks, I have to bring the mic way down. So uh, Dr. Wodinski, General Funk, distinguished guests, and rock star recruiters. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction, one, and good morning, and thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to recognize the USAREC's top recruiters for first quarter. And the way it works in recruiting is you set the tone and texture first quarter. When you come out and you're rocking it, it just works its way through the rest of the year, and that's the tone and texture that these great recruiters have set for this first quarter. The young uh, men and women being recognized here today are some of the best leaders in the Army, and they are serving in one of the most challenging commands in the Army and that's recruiting, and they have excelled. And I look at the Army, and there's like three one-offs, meaning if you have an MOS outside of it, and then you're put into it as a development program or position, then you go back to the Army. And it's whether you're working in HR, whether you're working in money, and if you're working in recruiting, because nothing gets you ready before you're thrown into that job. And these recruiters, these recruiter rock stars, they live in the tyranny of distance. We have 1,405 stations across the world in places like Russell, Iowa, Minot, Dakota, Barrie, Vermont, and they're away from all the camps and stations. And their soldiers and families are out there and they're doing what the Army and our nation has asked them to do. And they live so far away from the flag, yet every day they get up and they're la laser focused. So they live there and they swim in a sea of rejection. Because every day they're out there, it's 40 no's to one yes. Think about that, 40 no's to one yes. Hey, can I, you got a minute? Nope. Hey, can I talk to you about the Army? No. Nope. Hey, uh, do you, no. So it's no, no, no until one yes. And emotionally, that takes a huge amount of strength. And you can see what these recruiters have done this first quarter. They live in a tyranny of distance, and they swim in a sea of rejection. Yet, they're still winners, and they still accomplish the mission, both for our nation and for our Army. The individuals being recognized today assessed a combined total of 185 new enlisted recruits. The two medical recruiters had 15 board selected officers and the SOAR recruiter sent 34 soldiers to special operations selection and assessment. I'd like to add some perspective to these numbers. These recruiters enlisted more than seven times the amount that their peers enlisted during the same time period. The SOAR recruited uh, enlisted over 40% of the station's objective in the first quarter, 40% in the first quarter. Finally, the 15 boarded officers for the medical recruiters are the future doctors and nurses of Army medicine. They will keep successfully recruiting the Army of tomorrow, today, and achieving their mission because winning does matter. So I ask each of you to thank these soldiers for their hard work and dedication, their tireless efforts, the long days, the long nights, 
the long weekends and time away from their family and provide you the finest fighting force the world has ever known. And I'm extremely honored, Sergeant Major Gavia and I, and the Sea Rock are all extremely honored not to stand in this formation with these incredible recruiters every day, but to stand in formation with them and support them in whatever they need. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Muth. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Wardinsky. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here. We had a chance to visit with these distinguished recruiters here before coming in, and a real pleasure to learn about their stories and uh, what motivates them. And it's a very simple story to tell, actually. Uh, they love their country. Um, they believe it's worth defending, and they believe what it stands for is worth standing up for. And they tell that story to young Americans across the United States. And they have to confront uh, a whole bunch of difficult situations that are brought to them by pop culture, uh, media, uh, the movies, and so forth, in which they have to actually tell our story to young folks who have been immersed in a world in which, um, you know, very interesting stories are told, but they're not very representative. How, you know, how cold it is, how hot it is, how bad the chow is, uh, how tough it is, how you're never home. Uh, those of us that live this world know that there are trade-offs, but there are trade-offs with all undertakings that are of importance, uh, whether it's medicine, the clergy, uh, the military, uh, the law, all those professions in which we put special trust and confidence to protect our liberties, our lives, our spiritual lives, uh, all of them have special sacrifices. And these young uh, folks over here who talk to Americans about that uh, convey the importance of being in this profession. Uh, they talk about the challenges, but they also talk about the rewards, and they live them. I think uh, just to a person, every one of these individuals I spoke with had a family, uh, they had kids, and they had a life in the Army. And what they're doing is sharing with other Americans uh, the Army as a way of life. Uh, I am grateful to them. I'm grateful to those who came before them uh, because my children are in the military. Uh, two Army, one Coast Guard, renegade. Um, and, uh, and I always talk about the opportunities that the Army presents. And these folks here today have done an excellent job of, of speaking about that. General Moot just talked about the statistics. I, I find those very interesting as well in my position. Uh, I've been after this problem since about 1995. And uh, your work is the most important. Uh, the United States made a decision about 1972 to take a break with the past and have a volunteer army. And uh, before that, labor came to the army for free. And anybody knows that something that's given to you for free, you just don't treat it the same as something you had to earn and something you had to pay for and sweat for to bring on board. And so our army is a much different army than the draft army. And it's a much better army, I think, because Americans aren't free. Uh, they are somebody's brother and sister, somebody's husband, somebody's child, and you are the front doorstep of bringing them into an organization that cares about them and values them from day one. It's tough to bring them in. It's tough to uh, get them onboarded here. You do that work, uh, but because of the work you do, we value them all the more when they join our ranks. And you can see it in the things we're doing in talent management, uh, the people business, uh, the leadership that's here today. We've got General Funk, who is an amazing leader who helps me in the, the people people business. And we work together with General Muth. And we just wanted to come today and, uh, and celebrate you and celebrate what you've accomplished. Uh, thank you very much. And General Funk. So, uh, first of all, Dr. Wardinsky, thanks for hosting this today. And, uh, you know, I'm so immensely proud of this organization. And, and these, these are the representatives, but there are men, across, men and women across our nation telling our Army's story. And you get the absolute privilege to wear the cloth of your nation, to be part of something bigger than yourself, to tell our story. I've asked you to do that time and time again, and you have never hesitated, nor have you failed. What an incredible, um, first of all, what an incredible indictment on the leadership of our great uh, recruiting team, but more importantly, your own personal uh, virtues and values and the fact that you represent the greatest army on the face of the earth wearing the cloth of your nation. I have asked you to leave your jersey in a better place every day, and you do that in spades. Thank you very much. It's great to be here with you today. Thanks to the entire team out there in radio and television land somewhere. Uh, more importantly, thanks to the families who uh, represent uh, the, all the families across our great force who are trying to find uh, purpose and direction in our nation. 
and, and being part of something bigger than themselves. I can tell you that we have that in the United States Army, and so we thank all the families for helping us. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated during the award presentations. The following individuals are each being presented with a coin in a presentation box, a Titan stainless steel watch, and the Meritorious Service Medal for exceptionally meritorious achievement and outstanding performance as one of the top recruiters for the first quarter of fiscal year 2020. They exceeded mission requirements and stood out as one of the best of the best in their commands. Their dedication to duty was instrumental in providing the strength for our nation. Their performance reflects great credit upon themselves, the United States Army Recruiting Command, and the United States Army. Staff Sergeant Vijaya Adhikari. Sergeant First Class Brian Baxter, Special Operations Recruiting Brigade, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Sergeant First Class Yenin Noah Bambam, First Recruiting Brigade, Baltimore, Maryland. Staff Sergeant Michael Kerr, 5th Recruiting Brigade, Terrell, Texas. Staff Sergeant Alejandro Magana, 6th Recruiting Brigade, El Centro, California.
Staff Sergeant Leonard Markley, 3rd Recruiting Brigade, Toledo, Ohio. Staff Sergeant Shoshana Maya, 5th Recruiting Brigade, Conroe, Texas. Staff Sergeant Rawlings Nekpenekpen, 6th Recruiting Brigade, El Centro, California. Staff Sergeant Harry Palomino, 1st Recruiting Brigade, Bronx, New York. Staff Sergeant Tamara Robinson, 3rd Recruiting Brigade, Chicago, Illinois. Staff Sergeant Luis Sanchez, 3rd Recruiting Brigade, Avon, Indiana. Sergeant First Class Michael Schlag, Medical Recruiting Brigade, Raleigh, North Carolina. Staff Sergeant Corey Tarr, 
2nd Recruiting Brigade, Columbus, Georgia. Sergeant First Class, Michael Thomas, Medical Recruiting Brigade, San Diego, California. Staff Sergeant Emmanuel Velez, 3rd Recruiting Brigade, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Will all of the award recipients please join Dr. Wardinsky, General Funk, and Major General Muth on stage for a group photo. Please join us in congratulating all of the top recruiters for the first quarter of the fiscal year 2020. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in the singing of the Army Song by Staff Sergeant Keenan McCarter. This concludes the ceremony. Please congratulate the award recipients in the receiving line. You are also invited to a reception in the back of the room. Thank you.
Great job again. All right, take more pictures of your friends. Congrats. Congratulations. Well done. Awesome job.